cookies. When properly made, they are crispy and delicious snacks that track your every move online. But to make cookies well, you need a cookie cutter. I must now confess this is an analogy. A cookie cutter is like a class, and a cookie is like an object. Object-Oriented Programming, OOP for short, is a responsible way to organize your fields and methods. Python supports responsible coding, and we will now learn about classes and objects responsibly. In object-oriented programming, distinguishing classes from objects is essential. Consider this. In engineering, suppose you have plans that define a robot's design. From these plans, multiple robots can be constructed. Each robot, while based on the same core design, possesses unique traits like color or size modifications. Similarly, in programming, a class is like an engineering plan. You use a class to build software thingies, called objects. An object is similar to a physical robot built from the plans. An object embodies the class with distinct values and characteristics, thereby gaining its own unique identity. As our first demonstration, we will create a class called Person. In Python, you create a class with a class declaration. Simply type the keyword class and then the name of your class. If you are extending one or more classes, you can put them in parentheses. Otherwise, you do not need parentheses. Add a colon and then begin adding your attributes and functions. In object-oriented programming languages, objects are created by classes with a special method called a constructor. Python is no different. Here, objects are initialized by the init method. The double underscores before and after the name are Python's way of saying this is a special method. Because there are double underscores surrounding the name, it is often called a dunder method for double underscore. The first parameter to the init method is a variable that is a reference to the object. By convention, most people use the word self as the first argument. You then add any additional parameters. The body of the init method is where you initialize the object for use. It is common to assign each parameter to separate attributes, but you can also combine them if you are bold or bored. Now, you create an object by treating the class name as if it is a method. This syntax will call the init method and create the object. Pay close attention to the number of arguments. Here we supplied two, but the method is defined with three. Python passes the self argument for you. Also, there are three important terms to know. When you pass values to a method, these values are called arguments. When defining a method, these variables are called parameters. And when you assign the parameters to object variables, these are called attributes. P is now an object. In the constructor, we defined three attributes. We can access each attribute by name. Run. It is time to spin the wheel of call to action, or WAKTA, for short. Courses. Did you know that Socratica creates courses that live outside the YouTube realm? By the time you see this, we may or may not have finished our three-volume Python series. If you are early, sign up to be notified. If you are late, then rest easy. No one is ever late to learning. Just as we have attributes that are specific to each object, we can create functions that use object-specific information. If the attributes are the defining characteristics of each object, then the methods are the capabilities of each object. More concisely, attributes are the object's nouns, while methods are the object's verbs. These are called methods. Why are they not called functions, or object functions, or action code? The answer is simple. They did not ask me. Inside a class, each function you write will have access to the object data. The first parameter is the name that will be used for the object. Remember, you can use whatever name you want, but everyone uses self. Here we will simply print a formal introduction. Once you create an object, you can call the method. The constructor was defined with three parameters, but you only pass the last two. And the method was defined with one parameter, so you do not pass in any. Run. 
excellent output. Here we created an object using the constructor, then called the method introduction. Look what happens if we try to call the method on the class and not an object. Run. Python makes it clear in no uncertain terms that self was not passed to the method. And why is this? Because self refers to an object. Since we called this method on the class, there was no object to pass. This is why you could call this an object method. But most people call it an instance method. A natural question is this. Does Python support class methods? The natural answer is yes. To create a class method, you use the at class method decorator. Because this is a class method, the first argument is a reference to the class and not an object. The convention here is to use CLS as the argument. We will print a message and then test it out. Run. That is a classy method. Question. Can you call a class method from an object? Answer. We will try and see. Create person. Call object method. Call class method. Run. Both methods ran successfully. This is because an object knows which class it came from. But a class cannot know which object you are thinking of. And to clarify even further what is going on, let us print both self and CLS. Run. You can see when we call the object method that the first argument self is an object of type person. But when we call the class method, the first argument is a class. We must dive deeper into how Python manages class things and object things. And henceforth, I will use instance things instead of object things. To focus the demonstration, we will create a new person class. We will create a class attribute called counter that will track how many person objects have been created. You can tell it is a class attribute because it is not inside a method and not attached to self. Next, we create our constructor. We will store the name in an instance attribute called full name. Since we are creating a new person object, we should increment the counter attribute. This is attached to the class person, so we refer to it using the class name. We will add an introduction method. And we will add a class method that will display the number of person objects. We make person one. Call the introduction method, which is an instance method. Then call the population method, which is a class method. We make person two. And call both methods once more. This time, we will call the class method using the class and not the object. Run. This demonstrates a class attribute, instance attribute, class method, and instance method. Class attributes belong to the class and are shared among all objects. Instance attributes are attached to self and their values are only available to that object. Class methods require the class method decorator and can be called by an object or the class. The class argument is passed implicitly. You do not have to pass it. Instance methods, because of self, have access to all class things and instance things. In all the previous examples, we included the attributes and methods in the class definition. This is typical of languages such as C or Java. But Python is different. Attributes and methods can be defined inside the class, but they can also be attached later. Dynamically attaching an attribute or method to a class or object is called monkey patching. I shall demonstrate. We create a person. We create another person. From above, we know this class comes equipped with a few features. A, a constructor. B, a class attribute called counter. C, an instance attribute called full name. D, an instance method. And E, a class method. But what if we want to store a user's coin balance? We can assign this number to an instance even though it was not defined in the class. To see, let us attach it to the first person, but not the second. Look what happens if we print the results of calling DIR on both objects. Run. Both objects have the built-in attributes and methods defined in the class, but only the first person has the coin attribute. 
we can also attach a new attribute to the class, like a version attribute. Be sure to call dir on the class. And run once more. We see both objects have the new class attribute version, as does the class itself. Notice that the class does not have the full name attribute attached. That is an instance attribute and has no business sticking to the class. Question. Do you think you can attach functions to an object or the class? Answer. Yes, you can monkey patch functions to classes and objects. But this is a more delicate operation than dynamically attaching attributes. The reason is, you must fully understand how Python implicitly passes the CLS and self-references to class and method functions. Turning functions into methods will be covered separately. Object-oriented programming in Python is quite flexible and transparent. Once you look below the surface, you see a clear, well-organized structure of namespaces and attributes. This lack of rigidity gives you much flexibility, which enables great agility. But please, have some humility and give your code durability by organizing code responsibly and avoiding illegibility. <laughs>